But now it's time for our afternoon drama. Dating's a daring game in a new thriller by Peter Worley. State your name. Colin Sanderson. Colin Sanderson, you are charged that on the 15th of May 2012 you did murder Sarah Helen Renshaw. How do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. The Trial by Peter Worley. So, how's it going? Oh. <laughs> Exhausting. But they're lovely kids, aren't they? Still nice when they've all gone home. Doing anything exciting this weekend? Um, not really. Can you go back to... Sorry, you did say... Dundee. Dundee. No, not this week. I might do some decorating. The flat's still a bit of a steep. So's mine. And I've been in it seven years. <laughs> See you tomorrow. <laughs> oh, bye, Anna. Bye, Anna. Do you fancy going for a drink tonight? Oh, I can't tonight. You don't drink or just not when you're decorating? I'm going out. Oh, OK. Oh, now I'm going to have to tell you, and it's something I wasn't going to tell anybody. Well... It's just... I can't decide if it's something really stupid or not stupid at all, because everybody's doing it. You're going to have to give me a call. Oh, it's internet dating. Oh! <laughs> yeah. I'm meeting this guy. I've never met him before. I haven't even spoken to him. You must think I'm really stupid. No. Well, I do. <laughs> it's got to be better than meeting some stranger in a bar. <laughs> yeah, we are meeting in a bar. Oh. And he is. A stranger, a... right. Yes, right. <laughs> you know what? I'm not going to go. Oh, you have to. You might be really nice. So what's he doing on an internet dating site? The same as you. Oh, God, you mean he's also from Dundee? <laughs> this is worse than I thought. Come on, let's get out of here. He's from somewhere that means he doesn't know many people. Or he knows loads of people and they don't want to know him. Members of the jury in waiting, you are about to be sworn. As your name is called, take the book in your raised hand and read aloud the oath from the card. Would it help if you had some sort of emergency rescue plan? Something like, if you decide you don't like him and want to get out fast, you text me. Just one word. What, like, um, help? Help. And then I'll ring you and I'll pretend I'm, what, your sister? Oh, I always wanted a sister. And I'll say something he can hear that means you have to leave. Like your mother's ill. Our mother. Shall we? And you really wouldn't mind? No. Well, I suppose just feeling that there was someone out there. Think of me as your guardian angel. OK. Or, you know, what's that term the police use? Back up. Members of the jury, it will be your task to determine the guilt or innocence of the defendant. In doing so, I must ask you to put out of your minds anything you may have read about this case and to concentrate only on what you will hear in this courtroom. And even then, I must ask you not to come to a decision until you have heard both the case for the prosecution and the case for the defence. I've seen him. He's just come in. Has he seen you? No, he's on the other side of the bar. Well, go and say hello to oh, him. God, he's coming, he's coming. Look, I'll talk to you later. Excuse me, would you, would you mind if, if I just sat here with you for a minute? Uh, no, sit yourself down. <laughs> and, um, would you mind if... Oh, it's going to sound ridiculous, but would you mind if I talk to you as though we know each other? <laughs> I don't mind, no. I'll tell you why afterwards. So, um, what sort of day have you had? Fairly average, till now. <laughs> Me too. I, I was teaching this morning and, um, this little girl, Alicia, came up to me and she said, Please, miss, are you married? And I said, no. And she said, why not? There's a man just gone past wearing earrings and a sort of hoodie top. Is he looking at me? He's not your husband, is it? No. Yeah, he's looking round, but uh, but not at you, no. He's my internet date. Well, he should have been. He's coming back. And she said, why not? And I said, because no one's asked me yet. But then afterwards I thought, that's a terrible answer because it's like teaching this little girl she can't even make the first move. She just has to be passive. So what should you have said? Uh, Something like, because I haven't met the right person yet. Can you still see him? It, he's at the door. He's on his way out by the looks of it. Even better, I should have said, women don't have to get married. He's gone. Oh, thank God. Oh, look, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. So what was it about the guy you didn't like? <laughs> I think I'd already convinced myself it was a mistake before I even got here. <laughs> 
Let me get you a drink. Oh, no, no, really. Oh, well, you don't need me anymore now, so it's No, off. no, don't say that. So what do you want? Come on. Well, um, a dry white wine would be nice, if, if you really don't mind. <laughs> the name's Colin, by the way. I'm Molly. Pleased to meet you, Molly. <laughs> and you. <laughs> May it please your honour, members of the jury, I represent the prosecution. The defendant is represented by my learned friend, Miss Colshaw. Sarah Renshaw was a single young woman in her early 20s. On the night of May the 15th, she went to a pub in the center of Manchester, the Pearl of the Orient. Sarah was approached by the defendant, Colin Sanderson, with whom she had a previous relationship. Later, Sarah left the pub alone. Shortly afterwards, the defendant also left the pub. And it is the prosecution's contention that he followed Sarah to her flat where he assaulted and killed her. I was wondering whether you'd turn up. Uh, well, with my record, I don't blame you. So have you heard anything from Internet Guy? Mm. Like, where were you? No, and I'm hoping I won't. I think he's probably got the hint. <laughs> so, um, can I ask you? Go on. There you were, at that table, by yourself. I was waiting for a pal of mine, Paul. Who never turned up? Because when I went to the bar to get us a drink, I gave him a quick call and said, stay away. He's a good pal, he's Paul. He knows when he's not wanted. Oh, you've not told him what happened? How I sat down next to you and started talking my head off? No. Do you want me to? No. I think I prefer it if you don't ever tell anybody. We have a secret. I suppose we do. <laughs> Though I'm generally not in favour of secrets. That's why I teach infants, because they don't have any. They're just not capable of keeping a secret, not for ten minutes. No. <laughs> they come up to you. John said I hadn't to tell you this, miss, but his mummy's having a baby and it's got a different daddy. <laughs> and you go, well, that's nice now. Shall we practice tying our shoelaces? <laughs> I've only had one, what you would call, long-term relationship. How long? About two years. Oh, that is long. I I've never... No, I can't match that. I thought it was, uh, well, you know, for keeps, but, well... Well, she didn't. Well, actually, what happened, um... She died. Oh. Oh, no, it's Colin, I'm so sorry. It's, all, it's OK. Oh, how awful. Me and my big mouth. You've got a lovely mouth. Can I kiss you? <laughs> Is it allowed in a national park? Let's find out. <laughs> Just your regular sort of flat. <sighs> You've got a balcony. Oh, I'd love to have a balcony. It's about a foot wide. I don't care. It's lovely. <gasps> Is this you, this picture? Oh, I should have <laughs> hidden that. No, you shouldn't. <laughs> Are they your parents? Yeah. Oh. So, anyway, would you like that coffee I promised? Mm, do I have to? No. <laughs> we can skip it and move on to other things. <laughs> Good. <laughs> you are the best thing that's happened to me in a long time. Am I? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you stayed the night. And the night after. And the night after that. I think I'm in love. Well, it's either that or I'm sickening for something. And is he sickening as well? <laughs> well, the symptoms are there. Oh. That's him. That's Colin. I've got to go. Um, I'll see you tomorrow. OK, bye. Hello, you. Thought you might like a lift. Oh, oh thank you. Right. You want to go home, drop your stuff and then go out for a drink? Uh, well, it sounds like you've got my whole life planned for me. Pretty well. Can't stop thinking about you if you must know. <laughs> Are you OK? Mm-hmm. What time is it? Um, it's 
half six. Mm, good. We could stay here for another 12 hours. You're not hungry? Well, it could be. You want to eat out? Or I could cook for us? Mm, no, I can cook for us. It's either you paying or you cooking. I feel like a kept woman. Sorry. Oh, no. Don't look like that. I'm not serious. You know what? I was thinking about... Well, maybe you might want to move in here full time. Oh. But it sounds like you wouldn't want to do that. Wouldn't I? You want to keep your freedom. It's fine. All I said was that I want to cook for us. And move in. <laughs> Yeah, I can do that as well. I want to I wanna cook for us and move in. <laughs> what the? It's the police. Open the door, please. What? what? Either you open this door or we'll break it down. What's happening? God knows. All right, I'm coming. Well, what do they want? Well, I don't know, do I? <gasps> hey, stop that. I said I'm coming. <gasps> what the hell do you think you're doing? Colin Sanderson. What is this? Are you Colin Sanderson? Yes! Colin Sanderson, you are under arrest for the murder of Sarah Renshaw. Oh, oh come this? on. You do not have to say it's anything. That girl who I told you about who died. Now they're saying that I killed her, but I didn't, Molly. You've got to believe me. Uh, yes. I did not kill her. He must have been terrified. Well, I didn't have time. It was all over in seconds. So now what? Well, he's been charged and was refused bail, so he's in prison. And that's where he's going to be till the trial. Mm. Poor Molly. And you thought he was this really nice guy. Lou, he didn't do what they're accusing him of. He didn't. And you know that because? Because he told me. OK. And I believe him. Anyway, I'm going to keep visiting him until the trial, when they're going to find him not guilty. They must have, you know, evidence. Oh, and... Well, he knew the girl, Sarah. He knew her. They'd been together a long time, and he'd seen her that night. But that's it. And the police had questioned him, like they questioned hundreds of people, but then they left him alone, so he thought, well, they're not interested in him anymore. But then what happened, apparently, was they found a diary this girl had been keeping, and some of it was about Colin. Saying? Well, I, I don't know. But whatever it turns out she said, she can't have said, oh, and Colin Sanderson was the person who killed me. She can't have said that, can she? I just think you should be careful. Lou, he has nobody else. I love him. And I believe he's innocent. And I'm going to stand by him. Thanks for coming. How are you? I'm sick and tired of this place. Have you had any other visitors? Paul came. Oh, well, he's come every single week. And the lawyer. Saw him this morning. Is he any good? Found out in court. Were you in love with her, Sarah? I thought I was. But it was never like it's been with you. Still is with me. Yeah, well, but... What? You've been brilliant. Fantastic, but I can't let you go on doing this. You can't stop me. Coming to see me, looking after the flat. We've had this conversation. I mean, you must have thought back to that night in the pub and talk. What kind of bad luck was that? No, I didn't. You sit next to some guy next to him, you know he's charged with murder. Wrongly. He'd have been better off with the internet guy. Would you really, honestly and truthfully, rather I didn't come? I just don't want you to screw up your life. You are my life. What if they find me guilty? They won't. Anything can happen. The things you hear about in this they place. They won't. Now stop it. We were in the same class at school. I've always known him. Can't remember when I didn't. And um, the girl who was killed? Sarah, yeah. Knew her. <sighs> God, it's terrible. And now, Carl being charged. He saw her on the night she was killed, Paul. Uh, have I got this right? In here, yeah. It was Friday night. Place was heaving. You were here as well? I was with Carl and one or two of the lads. And yeah, at one point Carl was talking to Sarah, but don't ask me what about. It was one of those nights, all sorts going on. Then, closing time, this is according to Col. Sarah left on her own. He did the same, went home. Was Colin a suspect straight away? 
we all were. All got questioned. Well, I suppose he was top of the list because he'd been out with her for all that time. Yeah. And then they found her diary. Yep. Except it's not a diary like you sit down and write. It's some sort of recording. Oh, and whatever she said on that, that's why... That seems to be the clincher, yeah. How long is it supposed to last? I don't know. I don't think anybody knows with a trial, do they? But you've got the time off. Yeah, compassionate leave. I probably made it sound more of a long-term relationship than is strictly true. It is long-term now. The number of times you've visited... Paul? Hiya. Oh, I've been ages trying to find somewhere to park. <laughs> I came on the bus. Smart. So, what have I missed? Well, Colin pleaded not guilty, and I had to stop myself from shouting, Yes! <laughs> How did he look? I was okay. Gave me a smile. Anyway, then the jury was sworn in. Prosecution barrister, he told us what had happened, which of course was a pack of lies. Sure. And then we heard how Colin's DNA and fingerprints were in her flat. Well, they had to be. After he'd been seeing her for two years. Absolutely. Anyway, then it was lunchtime, so, no, you've, you've missed nothing. With your honour's leave, I'll call the first witness for the prosecution, Police Officer David Bowston. On Tuesday, May 19th, at approximately 10.30 in the morning, a call was received from a Mrs Agnes Waring, who informed us she was concerned for a neighbour, Sarah Renshaw. I was sent to investigate and after making inquiries, I decided to force the door of Sarah Renshaw's flat and enter the premises. And what did you find? I found the body of a young woman, later identified as Sarah Renshaw. She was lying on the living room floor. It was clear to me she was dead and had been so for some time. Mrs. Waring, you have the flat next door to that of the victim? Sarah, yes. Can you tell us what you heard on the night of May the 15th? Well, uh, it was quite late. It was gone 11 and I heard Sarah coming in, opening a door and, and closing it. And then I don't, I don't know how much later it was. 10, 15 minutes, perhaps. Yes. Well, I heard someone hammering on the door and shouting. Could you hear what was said? Not really, no. Only, only that it was a man and he wanted Sarah to let him in. And then? And then the door was opened... And I must have fallen asleep because I didn't hear anything after that. In your opinion, Doctor, what was the cause of death? Asphyxiation. There was pronounced lividity and hemorrhaging, most marked around the head and neck, as well as inhaled vomit in the air passages. She had been strangled. Any other injuries? Yes. I observed considerable bruising to the arms and upper body, consistent with a violent struggle. Members of the jury... You should not discuss this case with anyone, and as far as possible, avoid reading about it in the press. You have heard only the beginning of the case for the prosecution, and should keep an open mind. Court will stand. What do you think? It made me feel ill. And her body lying there for days. I said a prayer for her. I'm not religious, but I did. I said a prayer for her. We missed you in school. You do know your class was supposed to be doing assembly. Oh, no. <laughs> Year forward prepared something for tomorrow, so they just did that instead. Anyway, what was it like? Oh, it's, well, it's nothing too surprising. Well, except... What? There was a moment... In the afternoon, when, when we were listening to the horrible details, and I was picturing her, Sarah, lying there. And before I could stop myself, I thought... I thought, could he have done it, Colin? Could he? You've never thought that before? No. And what do you think now? I, I'm too tired to think... I've been waiting for today for so long. I'm just... I'm exhausted. Detective Sergeant, can you tell us what happened on the 3rd of July? We already had the victim's phone, which had been in the flat when we first searched it, and we'd used it to obtain a list of her contacts. Uh, what we didn't know, until the phone was looked at again, 
was that it had a diary facility, an app, and this was something the victim had used to record, I suppose you might say, her thoughts and reflections on life. And this was useful to your inquiries? Extremely, yes. We've had the material transferred to disc so it can be easily replayed. So now, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, what you are going to hear are Sarah Renshaw's own words. Um, I wonder, Your Honour, if the jury might be made aware of the background to this. I agree, they should, yes. Mr MacDonald? Certainly, Your Honour. When this evidence came to light, both the Defence Counsel, Ms Colshaw, and myself agreed much of it was not really relevant. And anyway, to listen to the whole thing would be extremely time-consuming. So we've selected certain passages which we both agree you should hear. It's really strange how you can be happy with somebody for, well, for ages. And you suddenly see things about them you haven't noticed before. Like with Colin, it's how we always have to do what he wants when he wants it. I suppose I used to see that as caring. And now it's like I want to say, you don't own me. I've got a mind of my own. I think Colin must have realised there's something wrong because he's been ringing and texting me all day wanting to know what's the matter. Which, of course, only makes it worse. The truth is, and I've been trying to avoid it, but... I don't love him. I wonder if I ever did. Perhaps for a while at the beginning, but not anymore. Which is sad, and I know I'm going to hurt him, but... I have to do it. The sooner the better. Well, that's it, done it. Finish with Colin. Of course, he wants to know why, is there somebody else? So I say no, and then it's so why again. Then when I try and tell him, he acts like he can't understand. He even told me I can't do this, I can't finish with him. He wasn't going to let me. What happened? Paul came in the store just as I was finishing my shift, looking for something for his mum's birthday, so I helped him. Then afterwards we had a coffee and... Well, that's when I realised it's Paul I should be with. I told him I'd finish with Colin and he said yes, he'd heard. And we left it there, but I think he felt it as much as I did. That it should be me and him. Did you know she talked about you? Yeah. Sorry, should have warned you. Yeah, the police interviewed me. Twice, in fact. But apart from what's there, Sarah's own words, I couldn't tell him anything else. And, and what she's saying about you and her, it's none of my business, really. We were friends. Always been friends. It sounds like she wanted you to be more than friends. Yeah, but what she didn't appreciate, Carl was also my friend. And you didn't want to upset him? He was upset enough already with her leaving him. Carl turned up at work. He had to talk to me. Then it's, you're seeing somebody else, aren't you? So there's a big argument in the middle of the store and I get told off by my supervisor, so thanks for that call. That was May the 14th. So now, members of the jury, we come to the final extract from this diary, if I may call it that. The one dated May the 15th, which was to be the day of Sarah's death. Your Honour? I am conscious of time passing. Perhaps it might be wise to save that for tomorrow morning. Certainly, Your Honour. It's really weird. And when you're there in the court and you're hearing the dead girl, Sarah, her actual words, you'll speak. And I'm thinking, well, she didn't know we'd all be listening to her like this, did she? So she has to be telling the truth. She, she wouldn't lie to herself. And just what is it she said? About how they were going out together, but then she finished with him. And then how Colin, he wouldn't leave her alone. He kept turning up where she worked. Like he did with you? Picking you up from school. That's hardly the same. And all this, what? It's making you see him differently. It's making me wonder just how you can ever really know anybody. What they're thinking, what they're feeling. We all just have to take one another on trust, don't we? Cole was in again today, and I had to call security to escort him out of the store. I think perhaps he knows the truth about me and Paul. Maybe Paul's told him and he just can't accept it and that's why I'm getting all this hassle. Anyway, I'm going out tonight. I've been keeping out of the Pearl and places where I might bump into him, but that's me being kind, which he doesn't deserve. And anyway, what's the point when he just comes after me wherever I am? So it might be tonight the balloon goes up. I don't know.
Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I appear for the defence, and I call the defendant Colin Sanderson. Colin, could you tell us about your relationship with the victim, Sarah Renshaw? Yes. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I'd known Sarah a long time. I knew her at school. We had um, the odd, what you might call a romantic encounter, and then... Almost two and a half years ago now, we started going out together. Did you live together? No. No, we both had our own places, and um, but um, she'd stay over sometimes. And... How did you feel about her? Well, I suppose I was pretty keen. In fact, um, at one point, I asked her to marry me. And how did she respond? She didn't say no exactly, but um, she didn't say yes either. I suppose I, I didn't ever really get a proper answer. But you continued going out with her? Yes, until she suddenly said that that was it and she wanted us to finish. Did she give you a reason? Just um, that she'd had enough. Said she liked me, but uh, it was never going anywhere, so... And how did you feel? Well, I, I'd wanted to marry her, hadn't I? So, um, I was shattered. I couldn't believe it. Did you uh, try and persuade her to change her mind? Tried, yes. When I could get her to talk to me... She started off saying that she wanted us to stay friends, but pretty soon she stopped answering my calls, seemed to be avoiding me. Well, I, I knew she was. So what did you do? Well, I did go, I admit, um, I did go to the store where she worked um, and try and talk to her there, which she objected to, and as you heard, I was escorted off the premises. Would you say you were stalking her? No, no, absolutely not. I loved her. I could never have upset her or, or harmed her, no. Did you see her again on the night of May 15th? Yes. I, I was out for a drink and uh, she was there in the pub. Did you talk to her? Yeah, I asked her how she was. She told me that she was now seeing somebody else and that she hoped that I would accept that. I said something like, um, well, I, I'd have to. Did you leave the pub with her? No. Did you see her leave? No. What did you do that night? I went home, went to bed. The machine didn't do latte, so I got you regular. That's fine, thank you. You know, he, he never told me he proposed to her. Never told me. And can I ask you, why aren't you giving evidence? Me? Well, you knew them both, and, and you must have talked to Colin. What, for the prosecution or the defence? Defence. You're Colin's best friend. They ask you clever questions, don't they? Get you to say things. Anyway, I don't know anything more than what we've already been hearing. What would be the point? Right. Um, were you seeing Sarah yourself? That was in her head. It was what she wanted. She made that clear enough, but... No. You proposed marriage to Sarah, and she refused you? Sort of, yes. Well, she didn't accept. No. So she refused you? I suppose so, yes. Moving on to when she declared the relationship over, she must have given you some kind of reason. Just, um, it was what she wanted. How did you feel? Disappointed. No more than disappointed? The woman you wanted to marry has not only said no to that, but now she's told you she doesn't even want to see you anymore. Disappointed? Well, I was upset, but there was nothing I could do, was there? Well, you must have thought there was. You pursued her, followed her to her place of work, had to be forcibly removed. You hadn't really accepted it, had you? Not straight away, no. And what made it worse? You thought the real reason she'd finished with you was that she was seeing someone else? I, um... Well, I, I thought she might have been. And might have been seeing this someone else perhaps for some considerable time. Perhaps even while you were proposing to... Your Honour, this is speculation for which there's no evidence. Yeah, I'm inclined to agree. The defendant need not answer that, Mr MacDonald. But you did suspect, though perhaps only later in the relationship, you did suspect Sarah was seeing someone else. Yes. Did you have any particular person in mind? No. Well, you were jealous of an unknown person? I just wondered. I couldn't help it. 
We now come to May the 15th, the night in which Sarah was murdered. You were with her that night. You met her in the Pearl of the Orient. Yeah, I met her by accident, yes. It wasn't planned or anything. And you didn't know she was going to be there? I didn't know. You weren't following her? No. Who left first, you or her? I assume she did. But you don't know? No. You followed her home, didn't you? No. We heard from Sarah's neighbour how you were banging on the door. No. Demanding to be admitted. It wasn't me. Until, in fact, Sarah did open the door and let you in. No. (laughs) Well, it had to be someone she knew, didn't it? Or she wouldn't have let them in. And who else had been stalking her? I've no idea. Just you. The man whose marriage proposal she had rejected. The man she turned down for someone else. What do you think? It's what the jury are thinking. Yeah, but you... You still believe him? Yeah. Don't you? Members of the jury, you may have been moved, as I'm sure you were, as I was, by the words of the young woman herself. Words uttered shortly before she was brutally murdered. But that sympathy, while it does you credit, is not a reason for conviction. This is a case in which there is not one shred of evidence placing the defendant at the scene of the murder. And there were no witnesses to his presence there. I repeat, no witnesses and no evidence. There are some cases where circumstantial evidence is so overwhelming that further proof is unnecessary. This is one. We know, and this is undisputed, we know the defendant had a relationship with the deceased. One that for him was so important, it led him to propose marriage. We know Sarah not only turned him down, but ended the relationship. Something the defendant could not accept. They're claiming he followed her home and then he forced his way in and killed her. Because she'd finished with him? Yes. And you don't know what to believe anymore? No. And I don't know how anybody else can know either. I mean, that jury, how are they going to decide? You might as well toss a coin. And whatever they decide? Then I'll have to decide as well, yeah. Don't remind me. I still... I still love him. I just don't know whether I can believe him anymore. How is that possible, Lou? I suppose what I want is I want God to step forward and say, okay, this is the truth. This is what really happened. But he's not going to. No. Could the foreman please stand? Has the jury reached a verdict on which they are all agreed? Yes. Do you find the defendant, Colin Sanderson, guilty or not guilty of murder? Not guilty. Your Honour, may my client be discharged from the dock? He may. Mr. Sanderson, you are free to go. Cheers. Thank you. I've got to get out of here. Excuse me. Sorry. Drink your tea. It wasn't just hearing not guilty. It was the way he looked up at me and smiled. I just thought, no, I I don't want to have to talk to you, not yet. And, well, I just ran. I literally ran. Not guilty. Because there wasn't enough evidence, I suppose. I I don't know. Molly, you don't have to see him if you don't want to. No. Just tell him. I, I don't know. You've met somebody else. Well, like she did, Sarah. It's Paul. Do you mind no, if I... No, no, no. Go on. Hi. Have you seen him yet? No. I'm still sort of in hiding. Well, from me as well, or just from Carl? Just calling, I think. OK. Look, it's up to you, but... Do you want to get together and compare notes? Yeah. All right. But somewhere we're not going to bump into him. White wine. Thanks. I'm sorry for running out like that. I suppose we were both expecting... He'd be found guilty. I'm going to tell you something. 
The night Sarah was killed, Colin, he followed her out the pub. I saw him. But you never said. But I suppose I didn't want to be the one pointing the finger. Because he was still your friend. And still is. So he followed her out the pub. That's all I'm saying. And I'm only saying that because I think... Well, I think you should be careful. You think he killed Sarah and now he might kill me as well? Oh, come on, I'm not saying that. No? Look, I'm going to have to see him. And he's going to ask me about you, where you are. What do you want me to say? Um, say, I, I still love him, but now I'm scared of him as well. Oh, no, don't, don't. Okay, what I want you to say, because this is what I'm going to do, because I've got to do something. I'm going to go to my parents in Dundee. I'm going to stay with them for a few days while I sort myself out. And you want me to tell them that? Yeah, yeah, and then I'll be in touch. You going tonight? Yes. I, I could get a train to Edinburgh and my dad will collect me. And if that's running away, then that's what I'm doing. I'm running away. You want to lift to the station? Please, yeah. Only, can we go via my flat and then I can, I can pick up one or two things? Yes? Louise? Yeah? I'm Colin, Molly's friend. Oh. No, it's all right. I'm innocent. Have you not heard the news? I did, yes, but Molly's not here. No, please don't close the door, please. I just want to find her, that's all. Well, I, I don't know where she is, sorry. No, I've tried ringing and texting her, there's no answer. She's not at her flat. Well, then... Only, see, I think she might be with Paul. Has she mentioned Paul to you? A friend of yours, yeah? Yeah, well, was a friend of mine, was. Now, and I've had a lot of time to think about this, and what I think is... Paul isn't to be trusted. Molly shouldn't be alone with him. Why not? Because he was the one that killed Sarah. He was? The one that killed her. No! Yes. How do you know? Trust me. And ring Molly, yeah? You have to. Ring her now. Who's that? Colin, is that you? Look, I know it's you and you're not coming in, so just stop that or I'll call the police. Come in. I'm going to keep your eyes closed because everything's a total mess. <laughs> you think this is a mess? I had great plans when I moved in, but I, I didn't plan on calling. Anyway, uh, I'm just going to put some things in a bag. No rush. Well, except there is. Oh, God, it's Lou. Hey, Lou. Where are you? Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. I, I'm in my flat. I'm just collecting a few things and I'm, I'm off to my parents for... Well, I, I don't know how long. Is Paul with you? Yeah, he is. Right, um, well, listen. I've just had Colin here. What? Are you... At my flat, yeah. No. Looking for you. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. You must have been terrified. No, no, no. It, it was all right, but he asked me to tell you. Can Paul hear this? No. Go, go on. He asked me to tell you that you shouldn't trust Paul. He thinks it was Paul who killed the girl. Why? I mean, why does he think that? I don't know. He just said I should warn you. But that's it, I'm calling the police. No, 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 it's not Colin, it's Paul. Paul? Can you let me in? Sure, yeah. Paul, I thought you were him. Look, this isn't fair on you. I can get a taxi to the station. No, I said. I'll take you. Well, thanks, but you know, I, I just think I'd rather get a taxi. Why? Because I just would... Paul, please, I, I, I need you to leave. Right now, I want you to leave. You sure about that? Because I'd say you've got a visitor. Oh, no. You want me to talk to him? No. I will. I have to. Well, hi. Hi. Am I going to get invited in? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, what's this? My supporters club having a meeting. Carl, I'm glad you're out, mate. Really am. That right? Of course it is. No, it's not. No, you wanted me banged up. You wanted me banged up because you killed her. What? Then you sat there watching, hoping I was going to go down for it. No! See, I've had time to think. Listening to Sarah's diary. You and her were at it, weren't you? You evil bastard! What? Oh, God! 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 Oh,
Are you all right? Yes. Only I, I rang Carl and he sounded, I don't know, but not good. And he was out somewhere on his own, so I wondered, you know, was he coming here? If he is, I'm calling the police. So I wouldn't blame you. Though, you know, Colin doing all this weird stuff might have just done us a favour. Yeah? It brought you round here, hasn't it? And now you are here. I just came to make sure... You... And you've done that now, so sit down. Stay for a while. Stop it! Stop it! Just stop it! More than you stop it! Sorry. Sorry. I didn't kill her. Well, somebody did. Somebody she knew well enough to open the door to in the middle of the night. Why would I kill her? Just answer me that. Why? I wasn't there. Only you know that. I finished with Colin. I'm not with him anymore. I uh, know. Come here. No. What's the matter? What, you don't like me? Look, I like you. Just not like that. Come on, what's Sarah? the matter? Get off. What? So, like what? I mean, what is this? You won't sleep with me because you don't want to upset Colin, is that it? Oh. You don't want to upset your precious friend? Or what? He's the one you really fancy, is he? Listen, I'm going. Yeah, I think that's it, isn't it? It's Colin you want to sleep with, not me. Oh, for God's sake. Colin you dream about. Colin whose arms you want around you. I swear, you. if you don't Colin, stop this. Colin, Colin, I warned you. Get off me! Stupid, <laughs> stupid bitch! I don't know why. Of course you don't. Which is why I wasn't the one charged. But I know it was you. Well, you were the one charged because we do know why. Everybody knows why. I was found not guilty. Got that wrong, didn't he? Molly, you believe me. Tell me you believe me. I don't know. I don't know what I believe. I love you. Like you loved Sarah. And you did, yeah. Nobody's denying that. What you couldn't do was stop loving her. You know nothing. I can imagine. can imagine everything. No, you're not coming. Yes. Get out, Colin. You've no right barging in here like this. Oh, but it's all right for him, is it? Who? Your new boyfriend. You want to get rid of me before he comes round? Shut up, Colin. You're making a fool out of me, laughing at me. No. Well, not anymore. You killed her, because if you couldn't have her, nobody else was going to. Do you believe that? Do I believe... Do you believe that I killed Sarah? Because I'm telling you now, I didn't... I... Don't listen. You keep out of it! I thought you loved me. That's why it's hard. You know, this is like I'm on trial again. Only this time there's just you. Somebody who'd said she loved me. Because I do. Well then... <laughs> Loving someone and, and believing them, it's not the same thing. No? So I'll go, yeah? Leave you with him? Yes. No, no, don't, don't. I don't know. I don't... How can I? Molly was Tracy Wiles, Colin Graham Hawley, Paul Stephen Fletcher, and Louise Julia Howarth. Sarah was Natalie Grady, and the prosecuting counsel was Jonathan Keeble. All other parts were played by members of the cast. The trial was written by Peter Worley and directed in Salford by Pauline Harris.